Hello Aviator, Sky here, and today we jump higher than the standard echelons and see how much beauty there is under the stars. The coming years promise to be full of space events, so let's meet one of the heroes of this universe. One of the giants of the airspace science, one of the best representatives of the industry, and one of the main elevators to the very roof of the world, the geostationary orbit. It's time to jump to an altitude of 35,000 kilometers. This 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top! Allumage Vulcan! Allumage des deux EAP et décollage Ariane 240 Galileo Falcon 7. Ariane 5 is a heavy class launch vehicle created by a consortium of European aerospace companies in the early 1990s. The main transport of Ariane space, the pride of the European Space Agency and just a very interesting machine. Let's get acquainted. Since we have not yet touched on the topic of European space on the channel, I think it will be useful to first briefly look at the Ariane rocket family. Let's start with the simplest, with the name. Ariane is mostly a French lady, and this name is better known as Ariadne, the hero of ancient Greek myth, the daughter of King Minos, and the same girl who gave a bold threat to Theseus to help him defeat the Minotaur and not get lost in his labyrinth. Ariane Space, the main current launch operator, of course is much younger than Theseus, but not new at all. The company was founded in the glorious 1980s, in the era of formation of the European space industry, full of problems and successes. Just a few years before, the European Space Agency was founded, most of its structures were just being formed, and one of the main problems were of course the launch vehicles. On the one hand, the local scientists did not want to depend on foreign suppliers, of which at that time there was in general only two. On the other hand, the creation of launch vehicles was a difficult and rather expensive business. Previous attempts to create a pan-European rocket were not particularly successful, and there were problems with the mission. The Europeans were not planning to implement such large-scale space programs as the USSR and the USA, and to create rockets for several local scientific programs was too wasteful. Then, the ESA and the French Space Research Center CNES founded Ariane Space. In fact, the world's first space launch services operator, which initially focused not as much on the government sector as on the open commercial market. As I already said, France became the birthplace of the company, and so far, the Fifth Republic remains the largest shareholder, but with partners. Germany and Italy, Belgium, Spain, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden and Switzerland. Ariane Space's main asset was the recently launched Ariane 1. It was a medium-lift launch rocket with a launch mass of about 207 tons. It had three stages plus a small upper stage, which allowed to bring 1,850 kilograms or 4,080 pounds of payloads to the geotransit orbit. The rocket was quite expensive, not without flaws, but promising. It was created primarily as a launch transport for the geostationary orbit. It was being upgraded in several ways, by improving the composition of fuel, installing solid and liquid fuel side boosters, and classic, by increasing the dimensions of stages. As a result of this evolution, from the basic Ariane 1 through the versions of Ariane 2 and Ariane 3, by the beginning of 1990 the rocket had grown into the mighty Ariane 4 a 58 meter, 470 ton, over a million pounds giant. The rocket was capable of launching loads up to 7600 kilograms or 17000 pounds into the low earth orbit and up to 4300 kilograms 9500 pounds into the geotransit orbit. Moreover, the rockets of the family had a curious feature. With their performance, they were able to launch two large satellites into a high orbit at once. This was done for reasons of economy, of course. Launching one rocket with two satellites is cheaper than launching two rockets. The work was going hard, but confident. Ariane 1 was launched 11 times, Ariane 2 6 times, Ariane 3 also 11 times. The main and first truly successful launcher was exactly the Ariane 4, which went into space as many as 116 times in the period from 1990 to 2003. The rockets were good, were developing rapidly, but time was passing and did not allow them to relax. Back in the late 1980s, the leaders of Ariane Space as well as the European Space Agency and industry realized that Ariane 4 would not be enough for a long time. In addition, the old rockets were already obsolete and could not be modernized infinitely. 
The only real solution to this problem was a new rocket. A completely new one. The project, which was pretty quickly given a name Ariane 5, got all the attention of European rocket science. The goals were very ambitious. It was planned to create a heavy lift launch vehicle with a mass of more than 700 tons, capable of launching loads of more than 6900 kilograms or 15,000 pounds into geotransit orbit. Meanwhile, all the special features of the predecessors remained. In addition, the Ariane 5 was supposed to have some new features. Back in the late 1980s, the theme of creating a small reusable Hermes space shuttle was being actively developed in Europe. This meant that the rocket had to be able to launch up to 18 to 20 ton vehicles into the low Earth orbit, moreover in manned flights. This is a serious increase in requirements to the rocket and its reliability. And so it was done, in a sense, in vain. Hermes did not see space. It was too complicated and expensive. And in the 1990s, cooperation with the Russian space agency in fact eliminated the need for their own spacecraft. The Soyuz vehicles were pretty effective in this role. Well, the rocket did not receive its shuttle, but it was already born. Let's see what the Ariane 5 is. Let's get to the modifications right away. Ariane 5 could not do without them. The basic was the version G, which was launched first. Further modernization led to the appearance of options G+, GS, ECA with a new second stage, as well as the ES, which was used several times to bring heavy loads to the low Earth orbit. There was also a project for the future ME, Midlife Evolution Modernization, but it was closed in favor of the Ariane 6 program. So the 5, in comparison with predecessors, looks much more minimalistic. Two stages of the same diameter look like a monolith crowned with a large fairing, and on the sides there are two large boosters. The first stage of the rocket, called EPC, is the largest. It has a height of 30.5 meters, or 100 feet, a diameter of 5.4 meters, total fueled mass of 170 tons at the beginning, and 184 tons now, on the modernized versions. Most of its volume is occupied by two tanks, with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Yes, the stage is cryogenic, both substances at liquid states are maintained at temperatures of minus 183 degrees Celsius for oxygen and minus 253 for hydrogen. What is curious, despite the fact that the hydrogen tank is much larger than the oxygen tank, the oxidizer accounts for the vast majority of the mass, 132 tons of the total 158. 26 tons of hydrogen. The fiery heart of the first stage is the Vulcan rocket engine, created by Snecma specifically for Ariane 5. The early versions of the rocket were equipped with the Vulcan basic engine, which created a thrust of about 800 kilonewtons at the sea level and 1115 kilonewtons in vacuum. However, with the development of the program, on modifications since 2002, they started using the deeply modernized Vulcan 2 engine, much more efficient, with thrust up to 960 kilonewtons at sea level and 1390 kilonewtons in vacuum. Despite the fact that, at the initial stage of flight, the engine generates only about 8% of thrust, unlike the short-lived boosters, it runs for 600 seconds, as much as 10 minutes, performing a significant part of the work to launch the load into space. The boosters. A pair of hefty, solid-fuel EAP boosters are located on the sides of the main stage. Each booster has a height of 31.6 meters and a diameter of 3 meters, weighs about 270 tons, and is capable of creating a thrust of 6,650 kilonewtons in earlier versions and more than 7,000 kilonewtons in later versions. Under normal conditions, a pair of boosters creates most of the thrust at the initial stages of the flight, about 92%, and decouples from the rocket at the 130th second of flight. Initially, during that development, a rescue and reuse scenario was assumed, like on the space shuttle, but in reality it turned out to be easier to make new ones, so the recovery is usually not practiced. Boosters meet their end at the bottom of the ocean. The second stage of the rocket is installed on top of the first and is located inside the fairing of the same diameter, so the two stages look like one monolith structure. Its task? Launching to specified orbits, orientation and distribution of satellites. Therefore the rocket control unit is also located here. The rocket has two second stages. The fact is that in the early versions, the second stage worked on the fuel pair of monomethyl hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide, a lively cocktail. The fully fueled stage weighed 11.2 tons, and the Estes engine created a thrust of 27 kilonewtons. 
At first, this was enough, and the rocket flew at this stage quite successfully. But in the Ariane 5 ECA version, the second stage was significantly redesigned. It became heavier and larger, so the rocket got taller and changed fuel. Now the liquid oxygen liquid hydrogen pair is working here. The HM7B engine, a relative of the engines of the old Ariane's upper stages, now gains thrust of about 65 kN in vacuum, can start multiple times and works on average about 25 minutes. This greatly improves capabilities of the launcher in space, given that it has to climb to a height of 35,000 km. Is it a lot or no? Well, the International Space Station is in the orbit only about 400 km high, so yeah, that's a lot. Let's now proceed to the main reason of this technological party, to the payload. Ariane 5 has evolved noticeably. If the basic version G could launch a load weighing up to 6.9 tons or 15,000 pounds into the geotransit orbit, the newest ECA version can launch almost 11 tons or 24,000 pounds. Not a bad progress. Having such opportunities, the Europeans of course did not ignore the main feature of the Ariane family, the launches of several satellites at once. In order to do this, two main solutions are used, which one way or another had already been used on the old Ariane rockets. The first is SILDA, a scheme in which the lower satellite is hidden inside the composite fairing, and the second satellite is installed on top of it. In space, the upper satellite is launched into orbit first, after which the SILDA fairing is jettisoned and the stage delivers the second satellite. The second solution is SPELTRA. Functionally, it is close to the first option, but is designed to accommodate larger loads. Therefore, unlike SILDA, hidden under the main fairing, SPELTRA has the width of the stage, and its side surface is a part of the rocket's shell. There is also the third option, the ASAP structure, thanks to which they can launch mini-satellites in addition to the main load. But this version isn't being used often, Arian was not created for CubeSats, and customers rarely order this option, if it is offered at all. The rocket fairing itself is made of composite materials and has two optional heights of 12.7 and 17 meters, according to the load requirements. Of course, to reduce the mass, the fairing jettisons as soon as the atmospheric density, or rather its absence, allows it, usually at altitudes of just over 100 kilometers. The first launch of the brand new Ariane 5 rocket was carried out on June 4, 1996 from the space center of the European Space Agency in French Guiana, and this launch was… a failure. Due to a malfunction of the system, the rocket got out of control and self-destructed at 37 seconds of flight. The fireworks were epic, but the rocket and the load were lost. Then there was a fire on the ground due to the fall of burning debris and fuel. It wasn't pretty. But the Rocketman did not give up, and in October 1997 the second launch was made, partially successful. The Vulcan engine failed, and the payload could not be raised to the planned orbit. Finally, in 1998, the third launch was attempted, this time completely successful. The ESA XMM Newton X-ray Space Telescope is still somewhere above our heads. Since then, Ariane 5 rockets executed the Guiana space journey 108 times, 102 of which were a success. Meanwhile, Ariane even breaks records in the mass of payloads. At the moment, the bar is pulled up by a pair of Viasat 2 and Utilsat 172B satellites with a total mass of 10,865 kilograms, or 23,953 pounds on a geostationary orbit. Of course, Ariane 5 also works in low Earth orbit. Hermes doesn't fly, but it's not the only vehicle in the world. The rocket's most famous cargo is the ATV, a vehicle that weighs more than 20 tons, or almost 46,000 pounds. Very heavy for the cargo spacecraft. It was being launched, of course, to the International Space Station, but it did not become popular. From 2008 to 2014, five spacecraft flew into space, after which the work was wrapped, or more precisely redirected. For the ISS, the vehicle is too large, but for the NASA Orion, just right. This pleasure is of course not cheap. According to various estimates, a single launch of a rocket with two satellites costs about 150 million euros. But we should keep in mind that firstly, this is a launch of two devices. In other cases, they would have to be launched separately by two rockets, which is unlikely to be cheaper. And secondly, the capabilities of the rocket in some missions make it almost uncontested. 
The most striking example is the pride of NASA, the epic project on the future main cosmic eye, the heir of Hubble. James Webb Space Telescope must go to the Lagrange Point 2 in open space, in the orbit of the Sun, not Earth, not on the American but on the European rocket, just like that. The excellent performance of the rocket and its ability to launch large vehicles into high orbits makes it very popular. At this time, about half of the world market for launches into geostationary orbits is occupied by the five. However, it is worth mentioning that 150 million is a great price if two geostationary satellites are launched and the costs are distributed between two customers. If the satellite is one, for example if it is very large and heavy, then it already becomes more preferable to launch on something else. Arian becomes a bit too expensive. Arian Space fights the costs mercilessly. Opportunities are opportunities, but the competitors are not sleeping, especially the gang from SpaceX that flew into the industry and ruined all comfortable life for the old corporations. But with Arian 5 they won't save too much. The rocket is already finished and cannot be widely modified. But the Rocketeers are not sitting idle and a completely new carrier is being prepared for its debut. Arian 6, which hopefully we will see very soon. It will be more effective in all respects and what's important will be much cheaper than its honored predecessor. Should be at least. Ariane 5 became not just the Europe's own rocket, but also one of the best representatives of its class in the world, which has been successfully serving for many years and deserves its reputation as an excellent carrier. Now the family is expecting an addition. Will the Ariane 6 become a worthy heir to a powerful ancestor, time will tell. And for now, we can finish our story. Like and subscribe to the channel. Fast space flights and soft landings to you.